Find your balance. That is our goal here at Boost Health. Welcome to episode number 51 of the Boost Health podcast. In today's episode, I'm going to be doing a special focus on sauna bathing and all of its health benefits. I'll also be sharing a ton of research today, so make sure you get your notepads ready. And I'll put everything, all the references and all the benefits uh, in the show notes and blog so you can check it out there in case you miss anything. Now, I am totally addicted to sauna now, and I think after you listen or watch this episode, you'll totally understand why. A couple quick announcements, and then we'll jump right into the show. Facebook group. Join the Boost Health Facebook group. I created this group as a special place to share wellness tactics, inspire each other, try new things, and have some fun. It's a nice community of folks, and right now we're talking about sauna use, since that's what we're talking about on the show this week. To join, it's really easy. Just click on the link to the Facebook group at the bottom of the homepage of MyBoostHealth.com. Boost Health TV, if you're watching this right now, you obviously already know about Boost Health TV, but the podcast is now available via video format on the Boost Health TV YouTube channel. Boost Health TV also includes several workout videos that I created, including one that's really nice. It's no equipment required, so you can do it anywhere with any space that you have. I will link to the channel in the show notes and blog so you can check it out. Newsletter. If you haven't already signed up for the weekly Boost newsletter, you can do so very simply by putting your name and email into the form on the homepage of myboosthealth.com. This way you don't miss any Boost Health news. All right, now here is episode number 51, 11 science-backed health benefits of sauna. All right, everybody, quick disclaimer before we start, sauna bathing may not be appropriate for you. Please check with your doctor before beginning any sauna bathing program. I started my career in wellness and fitness as a personal trainer while I was still in university. I had the opportunity to work at several different gyms while I was in school, and one of them didn't have saunas in the locker rooms. It was a new gym with all new equipment and the footprint was enormous, so it wasn't really a capital issue or a space issue. The owner told us that he didn't put in saunas because he didn't think there was enough research on the benefits of saunas. I remember hearing our members complain about the lack of saunas and that some of them may go to different gyms because of this. I didn't really get the whole sauna thing at first, to be honest. It, to me, it just seemed like sort of a lazy way to burn calories instead of just hitting the treadmill or a bike ride. Fast forward to five or six years ago, and I started hearing more and more about cold thermogenesis and heat therapy from more and more wellness experts. I did the cold shower and cold pool swimming thing sort of on and off, but not consistently. And I thought the research on the benefits was only sort of ho-hum. And then the heat therapy thing just sort of scared me a little bit. I had once overheated very badly playing golf on a super hot and humid Kansas day. Before you laugh, I was actually sprinting as fast as I could with a push cart around the entire course. I was attempting to get a workout in and the temperature was over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, plus really, really high humidity, as I said. The course was also extremely hilly, so I was getting a pretty intense workout. And I made it to about hole 16 and I started to feel dizzy, high heart rate, and nausea. Basically, classic symptoms for heat stroke. I had to quit golfing and the front office sent a cart out to get me with a large ice water. I remember struggling to drive home. I had a terrible headache and nausea for the rest of that day, and it took most of the following day to feel normal again. Ever since this incident, I felt more susceptible to heat exhaustion. Riding around Hong Kong in the summertime has been tricky as it can get extremely hot and humid here. Even early in the morning before the sun comes up, it's still like riding in an oven here in the summertime. So when I initially heard some of the benefits of sauna, I figured it just wasn't for me. But then I heard some incredible longevity benefits of sauna from Dr. Rhonda Patrick, and I was intrigued. If you watched or listened to my show last week, which was episode 50 on fasting, you know that I'm very interested in longevity, and I'm doing everything I can to make the environment for my cells a happy and healthy one. When I heard Dr. Patrick talk about heat shock proteins and aging, I figured I had to at least give sauna bathing a try, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. We are very fortunate here in Hong Kong to have a decent gym and pool and saunas in our building. And I've been using it almost daily for the last few weeks. 
and I'm totally addicted. I'll talk about my routine and my anecdotal findings at the end of the show. After we review these 11 science-backed health benefits of sauna, I think you'll understand why I'm hooked. Number one, longevity. A 2015 study in JAMA Internal Medicine is one of the most exciting findings in sauna bathing research. They looked at over 2,000 middle-aged Finnish men. They were from 42 to 60 years old for an average period of 20 years and found that more sauna sessions that they did per week, the lower their risk was for sudden cardiac death, coronary heart disease, fatal cardiovascular disease, and all-cause mortality. This is a massive study, over 20 years, over 2,000 participants, and it's pretty hard to beat all-cause mortality. So you can almost stop after hearing this study uh, and head to the sauna, but there is lots more. A 2018 study in the Journal of Applied Physiology showed for the first time in human skeletal muscle that heat stress can improve mitochondrial function and adaptation. A quick review from your seventh grade science class on mitochondria, they are considered the workhorse of your cells because they create ATP or energy from oxygen and nutrients and this powers the function of your entire cell. They are a pretty important component of our human functionality so you can see why there is excitement about helping these operate optimally. Dr. Rhonda Patrick also talks about how sunbathing activates heat stress responses in the body or good stress, including heat shock proteins, which prevent ourselves from damage and aging, and how humans that have genes that make this heat shock protein more readily have a higher chance of becoming a centenarian or somebody that lives over 100. A 2018 study in Mayo Clinic Proceedings that looked at over 70 studies on sauna bathing and effect on health found that there is evidence that it can lower blood pressure, reduce inflammation, reduce possibility of stroke, and help prevent neurological issues. So those are just some of the many great findings on sauna and longevity. Number two, improved endurance performance. This is one for all the athletes out there. A 2007 study in the Journal of Science and Medicine and Sport found that 30-minute sauna session two times per week for three weeks increased performance in male endurance runners. The sauna sessions were done post-workout. It was found that the runners could run 32% longer than their baseline. They also noticed an increase in plasma volume by 7.1% and red blood cell count by 3.5%. The researchers believe that the athletes were becoming acclimatized to the heat, which would boost their red blood cell count through erythropoietin or EPO, while the plasma volume rises. Number three, improved cardiovascular function. A 2017 study in the European Journal of Preventive Cardiology found that sauna bathing can improve vascular compliance, which is the blood vessel wall's ability to expand and contract automatically as pressure changes occur. They also noted a decrease in systemic blood pressure with regular sauna use. If you think about how many times your heart beats each day, it helps you appreciate why having an efficient cardiovascular system is critical to health. Number four, reduced inflammation. A 2018 study in the European Journal of Epidemiology found that increased sauna bathing brings down levels of C-reactive protein, which is the main blood marker of systemic inflammation. So what is systemic inflammation, you may wonder? We hear the word inflammation getting thrown around a lot these days and how certain things cause it and how particular foods or tactics can bring it down. It should be noted that some acute inflammation is actually good, like how the body responds to a twisted ankle or a cut to begin the healing process. Chronic systemic inflammation is the bad stuff that we want to avoid as it can lead to cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and cancer. Luckily, healthy diet, exercise, fasting, and apparently sauna can all help reduce systemic inflammation. Number five, improved muscle growth. A 2001 study in the American Journal of Medicine found a two to five fold increase in growth hormone with sauna use. I love the fact that there's a natural way to get growth hormone to increase. I've always been a hard gainer for putting on and maintaining muscle, so this is exciting. Number six, Better Injury Recovery. A 2005 study in the American Journal of Physiology 
regulatory, integrative, and comparative physiology found that a muscle degradation can be decreased by 20% with heat treatment for 30 minutes and 32% with heat treatment for 60 minutes while the limb was immobilized. So if you have an injury that is keeping you partially or completely immobilized, it sounds like sauna bathing can help you maintain muscle and regain muscle quite significantly. Number seven, pain relief. A 2009 study in clinical rheumatology found short-term benefits in pain and stiffness for rheumatoid arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis patients. I've noticed my trick knee feels a lot better during and after sauna sessions. Also, I'm able to take it into a larger range of motion on mobility movements when I'm in the sauna. While this seems to be temporary, I've only been doing sauna for a few weeks. I'm anxious to see if consistent use over time will help in conjunction with other tactics to reduce pain in my knee more permanently. Number eight, improve sleep quality. Now, much more research needs to be done on whether or not sauna sessions actually help with sleep quality and assistance with sleep disorders. There's lots of anecdotal evidence of folks saying that it makes them feel more relaxed after a sauna session and so they can sleep better, which makes sense. And there's one promising study uh, in 2005 in the Journal of Psychosomatic Research, uh, which showed heat therapy dramatically improved fatigue, pain, and sleep disturbance, but this was only for two participants, so we need to learn a lot more about it. Number nine, stronger immunity. There's an interesting 1990s study in the Annals of Medicine that found that regular sauna bathing reduced the incidence of common colds. The reason for this might be due to increased white blood cell count. A 2013 study in the Journal of Human Kinetics found that a single sauna session improved immunity function in white blood cells specifically. They also found that the immune response was greater in athletes versus non-athletes, so it appears that combining exercise with sauna can be extra powerful from an immunity perspective. Number 10, detox benefits. Sauna bathing causes you to sweat pretty much instantly as soon as you get in the sauna. And sweating can be tremendously powerful at detoxing the body. A 2012 study in the Journal of Environmental and Public Health found that arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury may be excreted in appreciable quantities through the skin and rates of excretion were reported to match or even exceed urinary excretion in a 24 hour period. With this in mind, I'm wondering if we make ourselves sweat enough. Number 11, better brain function. Work out a problem in your head while in the sauna. A 2001 study in the American Journal of Medicine shows an increase of norepinephrine by two to four fold with sauna use. Norepinephrine is known to improve memory recall and focus and alertness. I haven't quite gotten myself to the problem solving or meditative state yet, but I think as I get more comfortable in the heat, it'll be easier to do. So those are the 11 benefits of sauna. Now here's some additional considerations for you to think about. First, fertility doesn't seem to be affected. A 2001 study in the American Journal of Medicine noted that serum levels in men of testosterone and gonadotropins remained unchanged after repeated sauna use. They acknowledge that several studies have found a decreased sperm count in men after sauna use, but then they also note that Finnish men have a high sperm count and sauna use is pretty much their national pastime. That said, always check with your doctor first, and if you're having issues with fertility, you might consider leaving sauna out temporarily just to be safe. Infrared sauna versus regular sauna use. Dr. Rhonda Patrick was on the Joe Rogan podcast, and she mentioned that the benefits of sauna come from the heat stress itself versus the sauna type. She also mentioned that the studies have mostly been done on the traditional Finnish saunas at about 180 degrees Fahrenheit or 82 degrees Celsius, because they typically can get hot a little bit faster. I would say whatever you have access to is good as long as they can get hot. Um, we have a regular sauna in our building um, that they only turn on by request and it takes a little while to heat up. So I usually ask them to turn it on about 20 minutes before I wanna get in to give it plenty of time to get up to that sweet spot of about 82 degrees Celsius. And last, my routine and some anecdotes. So far I've been doing sauna bathing post-workout. I've been doing it after both my strength training and cardio workouts, and it feels great after both. I made the mistake of jumping into the sauna for the first time in all of my workout gear, 
Um, and I didn't realize just how much sweat there was going to be. It was buckets worth and all of my stuff got soaked. So now I just bring a pair of sandals and a towel with me and I can sweat freely without a problem. I put on some music on my Bluetooth headphones and this helps me relax and take my mind off the heat. I keep my phone outside of the sauna because it would quickly overheat. I usually do some light mobility work and stretching and enjoy the added range of motion and lack of pain while I'm in the heat. I'm already noticing that my heart rate is not going up as high and I'm able to stay in the sauna longer at higher temps. This is in just a few weeks of consistent sauna use. It seems that the adaptive process is already taking place. I'm excited about reaping the benefits of sauna bathing, and I think that there'll be more to come as it's researched further. Similar to fasting, I'm most excited about the longevity research of sauna bathing, but it makes you feel fantastic too. Thank you all so much for watching the show today. I really appreciate it. Please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Until next time, this is Paul Sandberg saying goodbye and find your balance.